I'm Marissa Norcross. And I'm Dave Freund, and this is The Next Page. Hey, Dave. How's your new year going? It's going well. 2018 is taking off like a rocket. Mm -hmm. Um, It's cold, Marissa. Oh, I know. I'm aware. Unbelievably cold. Now, Mm -hmm. you know, you know I love winter. You know I love snow. But I'm Mm -hmm. not a real fan of sub-zero temperatures, and it looks like we might be stuck in this for a while. I know. I can't believe it. I know you're a skier, but I think it's I am. it's too cold for that. Yeah, well, this coming Saturday, I was thinking about skiing, and then I saw the temperatures, and then mm-hmm. I realized that I usually go skiing with my son, Tim. He's out of town this weekend, so no, I'm not going skiing this yeah. weekend. Well, give you some more time to work on your goal setting and achieving those goals in the new year, I exactly. guess. Exactly, <laughs> and, and more time to work on the bathroom, right? Oh, so. yes, the bathroom <laughs> renovation. <laughs> The bathroom renovation that never ends. How, it will at one point. I said, when, when do you think? How how far away are you? Well, I, I ordered the uh, the stone for the countertops and the tub surround. Oh, good. good. So that's going to be, and I, my guess is, it's a guess. My guess mm-hmm. is that's probably a three-week lead time. Oh, wow. So by then, I think everything else should be done. I mean, mm-hmm. we're using it. Um, it has all the necessary functions of a bathroom. How's that? Mm-hmm. Um, we did we did fire up the the heated tile floors this past week. Oh how Boy, nice. Is that nice. I oh, bet. Oh my goodness. I bet. Yes. Warm those tiles up to about 80 degrees and you can walk on them barefoot and you think you're in Florida. Wow. I need that. So, maybe that's the solution to the cold. Uh, yeah. I mean really I was just thinking this morning as I was getting ready with the tile. We have we actually have a door in our bathroom that walks out to our pool, so it's kind of nice mm. to yeah. be able to do that. But um, right by the door, the tile gets so cold. Sure, sure. Wow. Could use the heated well. tile. And so the bathroom was actually a goal that I hoped I would have had finished in 2017. So that was a goal that I did not get done in time. But you made really good progress. I did make very good progress mm-hmm. with it. Mm-hmm. So, and I think probably potential or coming very close to cutting off my thumb (laughs) was reason to at least be delayed by a month. Yes. I think that's a good reason. (laughs) It is. And that's what we're talking about today. Yeah. I'm really excited for today's topic. Um, We are going to talk about smarter goals. So I know smart goals is a buzzword. I've been hearing that since high school. Um, So this is a variation of a smart goal. It is. Tell us a little more about yes. it. So in my, in my blog post that went out um, this morning, the title is Let's Start Smarter. And I, last year, I was working myself through a goal-setting program put out by Michael Hyatt. Uh, Michael Hyatt, I've, I've referenced a couple times as a thought leader that I follow. And, and Michael, Michael used to be the uh, CEO of Thomas Nelson Publishing. Mm-hmm. And he really has gone off on his own and done a lot of... Um, professional development, leadership development type things. I encourage people, just check out michaelhyatt.com. Um, and there's a lot of great things. I follow him on Twitter. Um, you know, I, and, and I've signed up for some emails. It's really good stuff that comes from Michael. And a lot of opportunities for, for some low-cost um, online type of learning. Mm-hmm. Um, but anyway, so when I went through this last year, Michael said, don't set SMART goals, set SMARTER Goals, and so we all know that the smart goal is specific, measurable, uh, attainable, um, relevant, and and time bound. That would be a smart goal, and and the the smarter ones add a couple extra steps to this. So the first one is it's very specific. Mm-hmm. So every goal needs to be specific. It can't be general. It needs to be something that is really, you know, what you want to achieve. Um, getting back to that that podcast we had many, many months ago on, you know, what do you really, really want? And and with goals, you really have to fine tune the specifics of it. Measurable is clear. It, it's, it has to be a measurable objective or a goal. It can't just be something that's, that's kind of vague. Um, the next for A, um, Michael has actionable. And, and I found this an interesting one because the way Michael pointed out he said, when you write out a goal, make sure your statement begins with a verb. Mm-hmm. I thought, hey, that's just so powerful. 
you know, so words would mean would be or, uh, verbs like exercise. If you want to ex, if you want to lose weight, get in shape, whatever, exercise becomes one of the goals. Um, for me, one of my goals for last year that I was able to to achieve my objective was that I was going to read a book a month. So my goal started out read one book a month and glean, you know, learnings from it. Um, another like complete, I want to complete a program by a certain date. Um, one of my goals for last year was to to work on the relationship with my wife and strengthen my marriage. So mm-hmm. that is, again, it starts with strengthen. So you really want to pick these verb, these verbs that can begin to lay out your goal because it automatically puts your mind in a mindset for action. Right. As opposed to just achieving something. Then the R was risky. And at first I balked at that one. Risky. I don't want a goal that's risky. Mm-hmm. But yeah, I do. I don't want a goal that's easy. I want a goal that's a challenge. I want something that I'm going to be really proud of when I achieve it. Um, and I think it was in our, um, maybe the program we did just before Christmas on intentional living where somebody said, you know, you don't know how tall you are until you jump in over your head. Right. And that's really true. Or like uh, one of my other mentors, uh, Paul Martinelli, where he says, jump and grow your wings on the way down. So we really need to, to challenge ourselves with our goals. They, they should be risky. They, they, we, we really need to be doing something that's going to inspire us, really, because of its, its um, riskiness, I guess. Right. And, and then, not necessarily like dangerous risk. Right. Yeah. But not just dangerous. something that cha- I think like cha- I think of it as something that will challenge you. Like, I know exactly. I, I just shared one of my goals with you is to simply walk outside for 10 minutes every day. Yes. Which exactly. Like, that's not, if you really think about it, it's not risky. But it is challenging to me because I dislike the weather. And so there is a risk factor there that I will not do it because it's negative five degrees. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. That is my Uh, interpretation. Is that, I mean, is that a correct interpretation? Yes, that is an absolutely correct interpretation. So um, uh, you and I both know someone who's writing a book, and I Mm -hmm. won't say who it is, but but I know he's going to say who he is because he's going to put it in an email if he hasn't already. Mm -hmm. Um, That's a risky goal. Yep. I'm going to write a book. I mean, oh my goodness, writing a book, that's, that to me is a daunting type of goal, but that's his goal. And he's even upping the ante on the risk factor because he's going to go public to say he's doing it. Right. Now, the benefit of that is the accountability factor just skyrockets Mm -hmm. because he's gone public with the fact that he's going to do this. So he can't back away now because he doesn't want to let everybody down. He doesn't want to look like, like a slacker type of thing. So yeah, that's the part about risky. Um, The T um, instead of being time bound, Michael said time key. It doesn't matter what you call it. It's mm-hmm. the same thing. You can't have a goal that just says someday I'm going to. Right. Not going to happen. Um, then the next one for the E of smarter, he put it exciting. And I thought, isn't that great? Mm-hmm. You know, think about the goals or New Year's resolutions, whatever we want to call them that we've, that we've set for ourselves that were boring. So if I, if I look at people might say, well, Dave, some of these goals that you set for yourself are pretty boring, like read a book a month. If you're not a person that likes to read, that's boring. Well, what am I going to, it depends on what you read. Right. So or yes, the outcome I, of what, you know, the, yes. the outcome could be exciting. So you're learning from the books right. you're reading. So that's it, exciting. Exactly. So I picked books. First, I picked books that, that were focused on leadership development mm-hmm. um, that I knew would work its way into my, the trainings that I offer and the, and the, the talks that I give and, and help my coaching clients. But then at the advice of my son, I started reading other books. So I, you know, um, I read a book uh, by Peggy Noonan called Times of Our Lives or something like that. Well, Peggy Noonan was Ronald Reagan's speechwriter was a fascinating book. And then I read some history books. 
Um, and now I'm just finishing up um, reading a book. I should finish it up probably the next few few days called Decision Points, written by George W. Bush. You know, how did he make mm -hmm. some of the decisions he had to make in on days like 9-11? Fascinating stuff. So while you're achieving your goals, they need to be exciting. But then I start thinking about, all right, so how do I make strengthening my marriage an exciting kind of goal? And if you think about it, okay, so what are the things that, or strengthening my relationship with my, with my kids or something, how do I make that exciting? Well, pick exciting things to do. Right. You know, can we go somewhere exciting? Um, when, when we go somewhere, find ways to make it more um, memorable. Mm -hmm. You know, I, we just came through the holiday season and, you know, the, the Syracuse was a beautiful place with all the decorations and things. So did we go? So we did. So one of the things that, that uh, my son and my wife and I did together was we went to Symphoria's Holiday Pops concert. It's a highlight for us. Mm -hmm. You know, we'll try to do that every year. So it becomes something very, very exciting just because you build something into it. So I know that you, you love to cook. You love to, but you have limited um, diets. So mm -hmm. how do you make that exciting? Oh, how do I make that exciting? Hmm. Well, I think I like to try to adapt recipes. So I'll take something that maybe I really liked as a kid before I had all of these restrictions and then find a way to adapt it so sure. that I can enjoy it again. Um, and when that is successful, that can be exciting. Exactly. And I mean, yeah. I'm looking forward to like, you know, my daughter right now is too young to cook, but um, it can be, ex I'm looking forward to doing that with her in the future, getting her right. used to being in the kitchen and um, trying recipes. And, you know, it's almost like a science lesson too when you're cooking. So um, that will be exciting. Excellent. Uh, you know, other other things that, because some people, well, for some people, cooking is exciting. Mm -hmm. Other people, it's drudgery. Okay, so what could you do to to spice it up, you know? Um, host a dinner a party. Host a dinner party, exactly. Uh, you know, um, have, ha do, do it, something that you're doing, you know, with your spouse or something or, you know, or, or someone or a friend. Because I, one of my coaching clients, um, he and his wife take turns cooking. Mm-hmm. And so they, but they, they want to cook healthy. They want to eat healthy. So they work this thing out where they, they pick what they pick their menus, you know, and again, it, so it's a goal, eat healthy, eat in more than go out. Okay. How do I make that exciting? You just find ways to do it. Mm -hmm. um, and I think we need to be creative. So when we're looking at our, oh, and then the last, the R for smarter is relevant. Um, your goals have to be relevant to your life or you're simply not going to achieve it. Um, I, picked, I picked a goal last year that wasn't, it, it would have been a nice goal, but it wasn't relevant to anything that was going on in my life at the time. Mm -hmm. And I didn't achieve it. So one of the things that, that Michael Hyatt also did in, in this program was uh, he, you kind of build a matrix for yourself. And using SMARTER as the acronym, Specific, Measurable, attainable, Actionable, Risky, Time Keyed, Exciting, and Relevant. And then he had Weak, Average, or Strong. And so you, when you lay out your goal, you basically plot how strong is, the, uh, our, is my assessment of those aspects of SMARTER pertaining to that goal. So you can actually, if you lay it out that way, and it's kind of hard to talk about on a podcast, but if you think of a grid... And on the left-hand side is, is the SMART acronym, SMARTER, excuse me, and then weak, average, and strong above the top. You just plot this out, and you can tell when you lay out your goals, what's the likelihood that I'm going to achieve these goals? Mm -hmm. Because the stronger the emotions or actionable things related to SMARTER, the more likely you are to achieve the goal. So I know it sounds like a, an engineer talking about goal setting, <laughs> but you know what? You know what? It worked. Mm -hmm. um, 
so, and I didn't ask you this question ahead of time, but so, so then you never wonder what I'm going to say, or you always wonder <laughs> what's he going to say now. Anyways, so in the past, what were things that you see in your life that kept you from achieving goals or objectives? That kept me from achieving. Yeah. So I would say, um, I agree. Like I, I made some goals last year that just weren't relevant in my life at the time. And okay. so that got in the way. Um, I think one of the big goals that I had last year that I did not um, achieve was to move, to sell our house and move. Mm, yeah. And that has been moved to uh, a 2018 goal. But I think okay. that it didn't happen in 2017 because although it was something I really wanted, I didn't have a a very, it wasn't very actionable at the time. Like Sure. And also I think my husband and I were in different places with with it so i didn't necessarily okay. like not that i didn't have his support but i think i was more excited about it than he was at the time so um it was kind of like a solo project when it really had to be a family project sure and so now i mean even in, it's like day th- it's day three of january as we're recording this um we are like on track to list the house february 26th or march 1st Good. but really the end of february or early march So, Mm -hmm. uh, I think we kind of lacked that plan last year. And that's, I think that's off. I think that's where a lot of people fall flat. Um, you know, oh, I want to go to the gym more. Okay. Well, like, let's get a little more specific and think about maybe exercising three times a week. Right. Um, for 30 minutes at, you know, at least 30 minutes something Mm -hmm. like that. Um, But I think some other things that helped me in the past, um, and I think this might be part of Michael Hyatt's program, or I'm not sure, um, but having some kind of, like, how are you going to celebrate Mm, when you achieve this goal? Um, Right. I think that is something to think about, too. Because otherwise, it's really easy to... um, you know, as you're working towards your goals and making habit changes to, to kind of forget how hard it was when you started or, um, it, you know, because it just becomes part of your life or, you know, you achieve it, but, but you kind of just think about what's next. I think it's really important to always celebrate your successes. Absolutely. No, that's huge. Yeah. And I, that's something that I decide like in January when I set my goals for the year. Good. Yeah. Okay. You know what? I, I'll go back to your, your house, your move mm-hmm. relocation goal. So, because it really pointed out something. Um, because, you know, you and your husband, this is a decision you make together. Right. You were 100% behind it. He wasn't. And mm-hmm. sometimes in our goals, we're not 100% sold on what we want to do. There's no, the, the why that we're doing it isn't strong enough. Right. And sometimes... Well, not sometimes. I think, and this is part of of Michael Hyatt's program, you really need to list the reasons why you want to achieve that goal. Mm -hmm. What are you going to get out of achieving it? Is this something, am I doing this for myself? Am I doing it for somebody else? Am I doing it because my boss told me I needed to do something? Um, Unless you start, unless you're doing it for yourself, you're not going to be successful. Mm -hmm. You're going to give lip service to it. Um, at best, uh, I use the example of, of, of coaching situations. If, if I have a company that hires me to coach a manager and the manager doesn't want to be coached, I can't help him. You know, but if the yeah. manager says, I really could use a thinking partner with this, or I'm struggling with this. Can you help me? Absolutely. I can. I'll, I'll help you. And you'll, you'll achieve what you want. If the same thing happens with our goals, we really have to know why it's important to us. Um, And I'll use the example of the book a month. So I'm not a good reader. Um, I have a bad astigmatism. So I, like when I read a book, um, instead of my eyes following the page, my head moves. Mm -hmm. You know, and my, I remember one time my wife saying, you know, holding my head, stop moving your head. I said, I can't because my eyes don't track side to side very well. Mm -hmm. Well, 
so for me that that made reading difficult even when I was in school um so number one I hate reading okay so I was able to find audible which supplements my reading so most of my reading actually is 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 through audible I'll get the book and then I'll go back to the book to to get specifics out of out of the hard copy but once I realized what it did for me in terms of expanding my mind, giving me greater exposure to other thought leaders, giving me greater content that I could offer to, the, to our, our members that I serve, now there's a strong reason to do it. Mm-hmm. So not only did I want to have it be you know, exciting and, and somewhat challenging and risky, it had, there had to be a rewarding part to it. And, and so that's where you really need to sit down and identify what it is that you, what's the benefit you're going to get out of that. Um, the other thing that you need to do is, is you need to identify what might be your roadblocks because they're going to come. Mm-hmm. You know, let's say I need to say, I have a goal of saving money. Well, I go out for lunch every day. Just deciding that I'm not going to go out for lunch every day doesn't help. Because the roadblock is I get hungry. So buying the things that I can bring for lunch type of thing really helps us fine tune uh, or, or, or alleviate rather those, those roadblocks that get in the way. Mm-hmm. Um, I, another one goal that I have that, that I try to do is, is my daily reflection. And so I sometimes struggle with the energy level to do it at the end of the day. So why do I have to do it at the end of the day? Perhaps the best time for me to reflect is the next morning mm-hmm. on the day before when it's quiet. So those are the kind of things when you're play, laying out your goals, you want to identify the benefits of achieving it and then the roadblocks that are going to step, get in the way. The benefits you want to highlight, the roadblocks you want to find ways to eliminate. And I also think a, a few other items worth addressing. Um, you know, there's nothing magical about January 1st. Right. So you might come across something that you want to make a goal for 2018 February 1st. And that right. that's great. And then also to not be discouraged when one of those roadblocks uh, gets you off track. So exactly, it would be easy for me to miss, like I said, one of my goals was to take a 10-minute walk, hopefully in the sun, every day outside. Mm-hmm. Uh, to get some vitamin D. And it, if I don't do it one day because life happens um, or maybe it gets to be too dark by the time I have a moment, uh, it doesn't mean that like my goal is out the window because I missed a day. Um, that, right. I think that's something that I've had a hard time with in the past where like even a week could go by and, and you get a little off track and then it's like, well, might as well just quit. <laughs> Because yeah. I didn't do it every day like I said I wanted to. Sure. Um, and I, it's easy to just let yourself do that. I think I encourage you and challenge you to not fall into that trap and n- not to take the easy way out and say, oh, I didn't do it for three days, so I guess I can't achieve it this this year. Um, just to like right. keep pushing through. And it's all about all of your goals are all, mostly habit changes. Exactly. Um, so if you're making those, it's, you know, forming a habit is, takes some time. And it does. You just got to push through. Yeah. And, you know, and if something, the other thing I thought about when you're talking about a daily habit of going outside in the sunshine for 10 minutes, um, mm-hmm. I love Syracuse, but this is Syracuse. Yeah. And we're not going to have sunshine every day. Yeah. Especially in the winter time. No, I know. When the winds blow over the Great Lakes, it's going to be cloudy. I think when I, not. I think when I started this on January first, there wasn't sun and it was bitterly cold. And so I, uh, yes, I called was. my mom and I said, "You have to talk to me for ten minutes." <laughs> it, like even though there's no, she's like, "Where? What sun are you walking in?" I said, "Well, sure. It's like behind some clouds, but this is you know it's there." It, yeah, and so. I did it. And yeah. some days maybe if it was any colder, it might have had to be five minutes that day. But right. Um, yeah. you know, like today it was – today I didn't call anyone on my walk, and it was a long, cold ten minutes. 
Wow. So I think I, I told my whole family that they're going to have to support me in my goal by answering <laughs> my midday phone call <laughs> in 10 minutes. Yeah. Just going to give me 10 minutes, people. Sure. Yeah. You know, the other thing that the people need to realize, and we talk about in our Change Anything class, when you had a plan and it failed, you didn't fail. The plan did. Mm-hmm. So we can't fall into this um, self-limiting beliefs that says, no, I failed. No, you didn't. The plan did. So let's tweak the plan. Right. And kind of move forward. And, 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 and maybe that is leading me into, you know, you and I talked a little bit before we started the recording about next week. Mm-hmm. Um, maybe next week I will talk about what happens when the plan doesn't work. Right. Because I've... I shared with you how I kind of lived through that a little bit mm-hmm. um, over the last week. So, and, and how you restart smarter yep. or you, you just, you realize. So we'll talk about that in, in next week's podcast. You know, what do we do when, when it just isn't working? We need a little course when correction. For, yeah, course correction or, or, you know, when, when, when just, yeah, it didn't work. Mm-hmm. And, and I'll, I don't want to give too much away a week ahead of time. <laughs> So, good. Do you, do you have any plans for the weekend? Um, we've got a third birthday party coming up. So, I think it's cars themed, so it, Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Should be fun? Should be a fun time. Yeah, how about you? Uh Well, I'm not going skiing cuz it's going to be way <laughs> too cold. I think right now I'm seeing a weather forecast of a high of minus 1 or something, I don't know. Mm. Um I think just a quiet weekend with my wife working on the bathroom. Great. Probably putting baseboards and crown molding up or something like that. Mm-hmm. So living the dream. Living the dream. <laughs> Wa- walking on the warm tile. Really? <laughs> Thinking it's, it's a beach, right? It's worth it. <laughs> it's worth it. So, again, we want to thank our listeners, especially as we, we get into this new year. Uh, we always love to hear from you. Um, please subscribe. Send us feedback. Um, you know, just tell us what you'd like us to talk about. Mm-hmm. And we're, again, we're thankful for all the listeners. The, the, the numbers just keep growing. It was a little bit quieter over the holidays, but that's understandable as people were busy. Um, I'll probably expect the downloads to pick up now as we get into the new year. And we are very thankful for every person that takes the time to listen. So with that, mm-hmm. I'm Dave Freund. I'm Marissa Norcross. And this was The Next Page. Mm-hmm.